Have you ever entered a ranked lobby below Grand Champ and wondered, why do all my teammates suck? If so, then this video is for you. My name's Luke. I'm a peak Grand Champ 3 player. And today I'm going to tell you a hard truth about Rocket League. No matter what rank you are, your teammates will always suck. So in this video, I'm going to go over my seven rules to solo queue rank, the seven things I follow anytime I'm entering the solo queue jungle to guarantee I solo carry, or at least give me the best chance at winning, even if my teammate sucks. Now, is this the easiest way to rank up? No. That's why on the side, I also run Rocket League's largest competitive discord where you can join for free to find teammates and climb rank together. Merch the video guy. Let's give them some time to click the link below and join. By the end of this video, if you stick around and you understand these seven rules, I guarantee you, you can immediately play better and rank up in your solo queue games after watching this. You ready to get started? Let's do it. Rule number one, position for the worst case scenario. When you're playing with a solo queue teammate, you can't position the same way that you would position when you're playing with your best buddy. Classic example, when I went into private lobbies against champs last week and smurfed, one of the first things I noticed that went out of the window at the low rank is consistency. Things like kickoffs, things like open nets. When you're playing with a solo queue teammates, even the most free goals are not guaranteed. So when you're positioning as second man in a solo queue lobby, stop positioning like everything is going to go great. You need to be prepared at all times for the worst case scenario. Example, kickoffs. When you're queuing with your best friend who's super good and consistent at speed flips, you can hard cheat. But maybe when you go into solo queue in your diamond lobbies, rather than hard cheat, right behind the ball and hope that your teammate wins it, soft cheat. Instead of two to five car lengths from the kickoff, let's position five to 10 card lengths from the kickoff. Will you miss out on more free goals? Yes. However, you're also gonna be able to minimize the damage when your solo queue teammate does inevitably f up. Make your teammate prove to you that they're consistent before you position aggressively. This is the first rule I always follow when I'm solo queuing, even at Grand Champ, guys. And it ties really well into rule number two that is even more important at the low ranks. Stop cherry picking or lurking. I get it. We all want to position upfield so we can get some crazy redirect for the Instagram or the TikTok or whatever we're posting on these days. But let me tell you, cherry picking for your solo queue platinum teammate might possibly be the worst thing you can do. By the way, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, when I say cherry picking, I just mean waiting upfield. The reason I don't do this and I don't recommend you do this, especially if you're a low rank, is because cherry picking is extremely risky. It's not just like one thing has to go right for cherry picking to work. Think of it. Let's break it down. If your teammate has the ball, not only do they have to see you, now step two, they have to decide to pass it to you. Okay, so two things have to go right. Now, step three, they have to actually make a good pass. The odds of that happening are like 2%. And we're positioning upfield in solo queue for a 2% likelihood play. And then when we get the pass, we still have to score it. Look, I get it. If you're a grand champ or you're SSL, you're better than me. You're a freaking bubble player. You're a pro player. Cherry pick all you want. If you're in comms with your buddy, you don't need to listen to my solo queue survival guide. But for 99% of you watching, I recommend you stop cherry picking in solo queue. It's such a risky strategy and it's just not worth it. Ranked players 18 years or older. Do you ever wonder if the stuff I'm talking about in these videos is right for you or if you're even working on the right stuff to rank up? If so, my team at thegrandchampbootcamp.com might be able to help. I started the Grand Champ Bootcamp so that 18 plus ranked players have a mature place where they can find community and teammates to play with, as well as pro coaches if you want to fast track your improvement with one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know it works when me, a hard stuck Grand Champ, used it to get up to Grand Champ 3 while only averaging one hour of Rocket League a day. So if you're 18 plus and want to see if you qualify, DM my team Discord account with keyword solo to learn more about coaching. I'll have my Discord first link down below. That's keyword solo for coaching. Back to the video. Rule number three for solo queue, forcing the ball. So if you've ever wondered why your teammate keeps getting stuck in 2v1s and you feel like you're not doing anything wrong and yet you're losing, listen up. You probably don't understand the concept of forcing the ball. You want to force the ball when the opponent has possession, but your teammate is behind you. 
Forcing the ball means getting the ball off of our opponent's car in such a way that we still have time to rotate back and sort of cycle behind our teammate. So in these situations, rather than front flip challenge into the ball, rather than aerial across the field and try to shut them down, look for opportunities to simply drive challenge. Look for opportunities to fake challenge. Now, is this me saying that you should be fake challenging and drive challenging all the time? No. Of course, there are situations where if the ball is clean, free, and safe, and you have an easy dunk, go dunk the opponent, right? Get possession back for your team. But if the opponent has control of the ball and you're first and you don't have a guaranteed beat, Look for opportunities where you can drive up and fake challenge. That way your teammate is next in line and maybe you get the opponents to toss ball. All the while, you stay back and are last instead of your teammate. Rule number four, use quick chats. You see, when you're solo queuing and you have zero communication, the benefit you get from just doing a little bit of communication, right? Just saying anything compared to saying nothing is massive. So when you're solo queuing, look for opportunities to use quick chats. Best example, no, I'm not talking about spamming, take the shot. I'm talking about back left, back right. I'm talking about kickoffs. Any opportunity where you can communicate to your teammate what you're doing on the kickoff or where you're going to be is going to give you massive advantage because let me tell you, other people who are solo queuing are just lazy. Half the people in solo queue Rocket League start out with the controller not even in their hand. Here's me eating Cheetos. Oh, we're in game. Let's play. So trust me, if you're gonna solo queue, just don't be lazy. Use quick chats before kickoff, massive benefit. Rule number five, understand the concept of buying time. Have you ever seen a pro player say, got time or take time? Okay. Get time, move your time. time. What? Yeah. What they're really referring to is slowing down the play. You see, the mistake most low ranked players make is anytime they get the ball, they wanna hit it as fast as possible towards the opponent's net. There are times in Rocket League when your team is under pressure and you actually want time for your team to recover. Classic example is if you get left in a 2v1. And I don't care if you're the most mechanical champ ever, if you get stuck in a 2v1 against two other players that you rank, you should get scored on most of the time. The only way to prevent this is when you do get stuck in a 2v1, we want to buy time. This means if you identify your teammates overextended, we wanna slow down the play. We wanna control the ball. We want to keep it close. We want to avoid accelerating things, potentially turning over possession until our team is in an advantageous position, or at least we're back in a 2v2. This is where it becomes super important to understand corners. Because if you understand how to use your own corner to eat time or stall out the play or even bait in your opponents, you're going to help your team recover from 2v1 situations and turn getting attacked on into quick counter. So if you want more on corners, go check out my video called the only video you need to get grand champ. I break down corners in depth there, but for starters, understand the concept of buying time because when you're solo queuing, you can't just hit the ball forward and expect to win. Okay. So you've bought time. You've got control of the ball. Now, what do you do when you're on offense? This leads into rule number six, and that's converting solo plays. If you're not converting your solo plays, if you're not converting your one-on-ones, in solo queue ranked, you cannot complain about losing. When you're in low platinum or look, even low diamond, you can get away with just dump the ball into the corner and chase it down. The reason I know this is because it was what I was struggling with. I tried it and it didn't work. So when I was stuck for almost all of 2023, I said, okay, I'm gonna start again in March. And I started coaching with the pro player Shock. First thing Shock told me is, Luke, if you wanna rank up, you have to improve your solo plays. If you're not scoring in one-on-one -on -one situations, you can be super smart and you can force and you can have all this off the ball impact. But if you don't score when you get an opportunity and then you get scored on, the reason you got scored on is because you didn't score. So where this starts is taking possession. What Shock had me start doing was he gave me this pack called realistic air dribbles, where you get these sort of awkward setups and you have to start air dribbles. You have to start controlled plays to score the ball, even from awkward angles. Point is, even if you can't do these crazy air dribble setups, what you can do in your diamond or champ lobbies is take possession. Instead of booming the ball into the opponent's corner and then wondering why you're always stuck on defense, next time you get the ball, check for open space and try to take it there. Try to start a dribble, try to start a bounce dribble. Anything but the cookie cutter dump and chase into the corner is going to be an improvement. Rule number seven and my final rule to solo queuing, maximize your off the ball play. Sometimes you're going to solo queue into a teammate that just won't leave the ball. The worst possible thing you can do is try to ball chase as well. 
You can't beat a ball chaser at their own game. Then your whole team turns into a ball chasing team and you will either straight up lose or you'll tilt your ball chasing teammate so hard that you'll forfeit before you can lose. Let's not do that. Instead, when you get stuck with a ball chaser, we need to maximize our play off the ball. This means looking for demos, stealing boost. This means maximizing your impact, doing everything you can while your teammate is on the ball to still have impact. So next time you get stuck with a ball chaser, become a demo chaser. Ranked is going to be a nightmare after I drop this video. And with that, you've got my seven rules to ranking up solo queue. But none of these rules will work if you don't have the mechanics to make them work. So if you want to keep up with the 2024 meta, check out my next video titled You Can't Get GC Without Mechanics to get everything you need to win in 2024.